This is podcast number four and is entitled Viscosity and Fluid Shear Stress. Okay, all fluids, all real fluids, resist shearing motion. Essentially, this means that if one fluid is to flow over another, there is a friction to that motion. Um, there are losses and they need to be pumped. Now, this friction, in fluids terms, is termed viscosity. And it's like one layer moving directly over another. And between those layers is a layer of friction. And that term is viscosity. Now, in many applications, in engineering applications, you can consider the viscosity to, the viscosity to be so small that it can be considered inviscid. Inviscid fluids don't exist in reality, but part of being of engineering is knowing when you need to account for the effects of viscosity or when viscosity in a flow is so small that it, is, that it could be considered inviscid or negligible. To further an analogy um, with solid mechanics, we take a look at this block. Now, this is a three-dimensional block that goes into the screen. And by applying a force over the surface, a shear force, it will deform this block like this. This will give us a shear strain, this angle theta. And over this area, this area that extends into the screen gives us a shear stress that is defined by the uh, force of the shear, the shear force over that area that it's applied over. And that's uh, given the uh, symbol tau, with the Greek symbol tau. This is an equation that you need to know for your course. So let's now apply the same to a fluid. If we take a look at these two plates, we have the lower plate, AB, which is static, not moving, has a velocity of zero meters per second. The top surface, however, CD, is shown to be moving at a speed of U, U meters per second from left to right. They're separated by a gap, which is a distance Y, and within that gap is a fluid. We'll say water in this case. Now, because the surfaces are termed a no-slipped boundary condition, it means that the fluid locally has the same velocity as those surfaces. So the fluid at the bottom is not moving, has a zero velocity, and the fluid at the top is moving at a velocity of u meters per second. Therefore, there's something that we call a velocity gradient from the bottom to the top. Essentially, the velocity of the fluid is changing as you increase with distance from the bottom to the top. So this velocity gradient can be termed du dy. The shear force is proportional to this velocity gradient, du dy. Now, it was Newton that postulated that this was a direct relationship, a direct, direct linear relationship between the shear stress and the velocity gradient. And the constant of proportionality is mu, which is the viscosity of the fluid, a fluid property. This, again, is an equation that you need to know. The units of viscosity, mu, are kilograms per meter second, or written another way, are Newton seconds per meter squared, or alternatively, Pascal seconds. <coughs> Here's a diagram that shows on the y-axis the shear stress, and plotted against the x-axis, which is du dy, the rate of shear, or the velocity gradient. As you can see, the line, the straight line that goes through zero is a Newtonian fluid that follows the equation tau is equal to mu du dy. For the majority of fluids and all the fluids that we're going to cover in this course, they are Newtonian. However, it is important to realize that there are many other types of fluids that do not behave according to this equation. The study of these other fluids is called rheology. And typical fluids would be considered to be dilatant fluids, pseudoplastic fluids, plastic fluids. And one final one is an ideal fluid. This is where the shear stress is equal to zero, irrespective of the rate of shear or the velocity gradient. Essentially, it has a viscosity of zero. It's an inviscid fluid, and it's not a real fluid, but, can be, but you can make this assumption sometimes depending on your application in fluid mechanics. Now, a dynamic or kinematic viscosity is defined as the viscosity that we had previous divided by the density of the fluid and has units of meters squared per second. It is sometimes used to indicate the ratio of the inertia within the flow to the viscous forces lightly in the motion. Viscosity of a given fluid depends on the temperature and interestingly, not pressure. So if I was to increase the 
temperature of a fluid, it would change its viscosity. And that is podcast number four, which dealt with viscosity and shear stress within a fluid.